When you have gone on for 30 seasons and are one of the biggest shows on the planet, it's safe to say that you can basically do whatever you want. Make an eerie prediction for the future, sure. Constantly insult the network you're on, of course. Have a crossover episode with other iconic TV shows, absolutely. Dude, The Simpsons have done everything already, who cares? And that's what we are going to take a look at today with 10 different times The Simpsons crossed over with other iconic TV shows. Let's dive in. Okay, that doesn't sound super exciting. Let's start off with a show in the graining universe, Futurama. While Futurama didn't quite hit the heights of The Simpsons, the cult classic comedy, which was also created by Matt Groening, has a huge fan base in its own right, with the show being equally hilarious and emotional. No one can tell me they didn't tear up over Fry's dog. I won't believe you. Also, I'm sorry I brought that up. <laughs> Seeing as how both shows are under Groening's umbrella, it is unsurprising to see the two share the screen. In the episode Simsurama, we see the Planet Express crew make their way to 742 Evergreen Terrace in order to prevent a future where creatures have evolved from the DNA of America's bad boy Bart Simpson. However, in an episode which should have been epic, the crossover is arguably pretty underwhelming. Yes, there are some pretty good interactions between Bender and Homer. I mean, how could there not be? Bender is basically a robot Homer. But overall, the dynamics between the two shows is very rarely seen, and the comedy from both falls flat. But this video isn't a review, just a rant, a screen rant. Maybe next, though, they will do a crossover with another graining show, Disenchantment. Although, uh, <laughs> I, I won't hold my breath. Like Futurama, this next crossover is also very unsurprising, down to the fact that the shows are so often compared with one another. We are of course talking about another crude and controversial animated show centering around a dysfunctional family and their wacky adventures and surreal cutaway gags. Family Guy. In the episode The Simpsons Guy, which was the first episode of season 13 of Family Guy, we see the Griffin family leaving Quahog after angering the locals, just like Homer when he started slapping people with gloves and challenging them to a duel. The Griffins then end up having their car stolen before they end up in Springfield, where they run into, you guessed it, Mo. Just kidding, it's, it's The Simpsons, of course. While the action may be set in Springfield, this episode is most definitely a Family Guy outing, and the differences between the two shows quickly become more apparent rather than the similarities. And I still can't unsee that sexy car wash, no matter how hard I try. Well... The Simpsons are well known for their parodies, but these parodies get taken to another meta level in a crossover episode. Take, for example, their 24 parody. In the episode 24 Minutes, Lisa and Bart race against time to stop a stink bomb going off at the Springfield Elementary Bake Sale. Along the way, they encounter none other than Jack Bauer himself, voiced by Keeper Sutherland, and Chloe O'Brien, voiced by Lynn Ricecub, with both being some of the greatest Simpsons cameos of all time, along with Gary Coleman. Isn't it possible for an evil company to make people happy? In terms of parody, it is arguably one of the show's strongest, and let's face it, everyone loves a Simpsons doing a thriller episode over a mundane event. Plus, it's Keeper Sutherland in The Simpsons. What's not to love? Now I think it's safe to say that everyone gets excited in a Mr. Burns episode, or at least when he's integral to the plot, and he is very much integral to the plot of the Simpsons crossover episode with the X-Files. We are of course talking about the season 8 episode The Springfield Files, where Homer encounters an extraterrestrial in the woods after getting drunk on imported Duff beers. At first, Homer's warnings go unnoticed, and eventually people start to take notice, and people flock to see the so-called alien that offers them love. It is at that point that the FBI decided to get involved, and who else should appear but the deadpan protagonists of the X-Files. Agents Mulder and Scully voiced by the characters' actors David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. The episode is not just arguably the greatest crossover episode on this list, but one of the show's strongest episodes with some great sight gags. Has Mo carrying a whale, and a cameo by the one and only Leonard Nimoy, and of course, the reveal that Mr. Burns was the alien all along. 
Now, this entry is definitely arguable in terms of iconic, but it is still an important one by any means, as it led us to some fan-favorite jokes, such as Boo Earns. Are they booing me? Uh, no, they're saying Boo Earns. We are talking about the crossover episode with The Critic. If you are not familiar with The Critic, it was a show starring John Lovitz as Jay Sherman, who was, as you probably guessed, a film critic. But the show was canceled after two seasons before having a brief revival on the web. Do people still call it the web? Don't push your luck! Don't push your luck! Eh, I'm old. Sherman makes an appearance in The Simpsons in the episode A Star is Burns, with Sherman brought in to judge the Springfield Film Festival. While some of the jokes are a little ham-fisted, in true Simpsons style, they constantly make nods to the fact that they are doing a crossover episode. And some of the films the Springfielders come up with are absolute gold. Who could not love Barney Gumbel's avant-garde classic Pucahontas, or Hans Molman's social satirical flick Football in the Groin? This contest is over. Give that man the $10,000. This next one is admittedly more of a cameo than a crossover, but seeing as they are not animated in the Simpsons form, but in their own traditional format and voiced by the original actors, it's technically a crossover, as well as a nod to another Fox show. In the season nine episode, Bart Star, Homer ends up coaching Bart's peewee football team. In a quick cameo, who else should be watching the game but the Hill family from the long-lived show King of the Hill? It's a quick and subtle crossover, but still hilarious nonetheless with the super meta line, We drove 2,000 miles for this. Arguably, a longer crossover could have also led to some equally funny moments, but a quick throwaway gag also works like a charm. Moving away from these scripted TV series crossovers and onto the world of reality TV. In the episode Judge Me Tender, Mo proves himself to be good at judging talent and therefore gets invited to be a judge on the show American Idol. However, not everything goes simply for our resident barkeep as he develops a fierce feud with his co-judge Simon Cowell. In terms of parody, it is arguably pretty soft for The Simpsons as they go fairly easy on the show and the episode doesn't feel particularly Simpson-y. Furthermore, what makes this arguably more disappointing is the fact that this isn't the greatest American Idol crossover with their appearance on Shrek 2 being brilliant and adored by fans. Now again, we are being a little bit literal with the word iconic, but this is another TV series that had a full-on crossover episode in The Simpsons. In the episode, The Computer Wore Menace Shoes, Homer buys a computer and makes his own fake news site before he becomes a target of a mysterious organization who then imprisons him and keeps him captive on a strange island. That's where he encounters a man named Number Six, voiced by Patrick McGowan, the lead character of the 60s British sci-fi series The Prisoner. McGowan, who is not only the star of the series, but the co-creator, only has a fleeting cameo appearance, but the episode has constant references to the show and walks the line between parody and crossover. It is definitely the strangest crossover here, and while you would expect a crossover with Futurama or Family Guy, you wouldn't really expect a British TV show from the 60s. Still though, it kinda works. The Simpsons have had no issue poking fun at their old owner's Fox in the past, constantly making satirical jokes at the network's expense. But the show went even further than usual in this crossover episode, where they seemingly attacked Rupert Murdoch's plans to eliminate public broadcasting. In the episode Missionary Impossible, the show brings in a whole load of PBS cameos, including the Teletubbies, Mr. Rogers, Betty White, and even the Sesame Street crew. The episode is a surprisingly pleasant tribute to PBS, although there is something strangely terrifying about the line, Elmo knows where you live! Now this last one is a little bit of a cheat, as it's not a Simpsons episode, and I don't think any of the people behind The Simpsons were actually involved in it, but Ryan George told me to get this video to 10 minutes, or he won't do a pitch meeting of my favorite film. So, I am going to mention the seventh episode of South Park Season 6, The Simpsons Already Did It. Okay, okay. Being around for 30 seasons, The Simpsons have basically done everything to the detriment of every other animated comedy around. South Park pokes fun at this in the episode as Butters devises a number of schemes to take over the world, only to find out that The Simpsons already did it. Simpsons did it. 
These plans include Mr. Burns' plot to block out the sun and an idea that mirrors Bart cutting off the head of Jebediah Springfield's statue. Eventually, though, the South Park crew accept the fact that the Simpsons have done every idea imaginable and realize that worrying about it is completely pointless. I was going to make a joke about how the Simpsons are basically the kings of TV, but they've probably already done it. <laughs> Roll it again. What was your favorite crossover episode? And what series would you want to see The Simpsons crossover with at some point? For me personally, if The Office was still going, I'd want that to be a crossover episode. The memes would be insane. <laughs>